I'm Dr. Paul Letterer, and today I'd like to talk to you about a very interesting subject, visual attention. You see, we often see children that come in with diagnoses of attention deficit disorders, ADD or ADHD. However, many of these children actually do not have this ADD or ADHD, but rather an attention with vision caused by a muscle imbalance. And so much of the literature recently has been centering on the convergence insufficiency condition or a binocular dysfunction, an eye teeming disorder. When these conditions start to surface, a small print becomes more apparent in the academic world of these children. There's a tendency for these kinds of conditions to show the same symptoms. The tendency to lose their place and skip words and reread as they read longer that causes them to avoid these kinds of sensations and develop behavior adaptations or attention issues. Now, when you read to these children, very often if they don't have an auditory learning problem, they have very good attention. They can sustain long term and enjoy listening to you reading to them. It's when they have to read that these symptoms surface. And it's often the misreading and substituting of the small words, not the big words, but the endings and the periods and the comments that are associated with this spacing out under stress visually and this inability to sustain good comprehension. When these occur, it is not they that find these errors or pick up on these errors, it is rather the mother. And the mother or father reading with them starts to say, well, you missed that word or correct them, and this is an embarrassing situation. In fact, in the adults I've treated, I find that they still will remember back how it was in fourth grade when these difficulties were so, so embarrassing to them in front of their class. So it is that muscle imbalances called convergence deficiencies have so many of the overlapping issues that many children with these conditions have really been misdiagnosed. And we don't want to treat the symptoms of these conditions when possible we want to treat what's causing these conditions. So I think it is important to understand how children very young find that visual problems are so distressing to their performance behaviors, whether it be sports or their schoolwork or their reading, because it is behavior adaptations of avoidance, the self-esteem loss, the feeling that you can't do these things and knowing that, uh, let me count the pages, see how small the print is, no pictures, oh, this is going to get me. When they start to notice that the visual problems of reading or difficulties that they have doing things that they might otherwise have thought should be easier, but they found difficulty with, Often avoidance becomes the substitute, the way of coping, and it's these conditions that I enjoy most of all, seeing unwind or reveal to that child an understanding that as the visual problems start to improve, as they're effectively diagnosed, as symptoms are reviewed and start to decrease, that an individual's self-worth starts to improve, an awareness, that an understanding that these symptoms are no longer present, that they misdiagnosed previously, and that now what appeared to be an attention deficit was merely a reflection of an inefficiency within their visual system, a poor coordination with the way their eyes work together, and as these conditions start to decrease, so do those symptoms. So I think it is important to note that there are many children with ADD or ADHD. These visual problems masquerade as if they're attention deficit disorders. So we want to clearly be respectful to those children who may need the medication, but it's not those that I'm addressing. And many of those children also have these convergence problems. It is not only one condition. So it is for us to do a clear diagnostic evaluation to determine which of these children do we see that really have a high potential of these types of misdiagnosis. Which of these children can we help and eliminate the specific symptoms that relate to their condition? and which of these children can return to a more normal visual situation and a more normal academic potential and achieve what their true abilities really are, whether it be academic, whether it be recreational, or whether it be for their own hobbies and things they wish to do, that the more they can sustain working in near and see that it was linked to more physical visual issues, perceptual processing issues, that these changes can be a gratifying and evolving situation to becoming a fine representation of a change in visual function and an achievement of reinventing themselves and finding who they really are potentially.